everyone, my name is Tamara Chambers and this is Tamara's Never Seen. And today I'm watching the classic, the film wah, classic from 1990, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't have a very complicated tapestry to unwind about my relationship with the Ninja Turtles. I can remember watching a few episodes here and there of the cartoon series growing up, but I've never seen a Ninja Turtles movie, and I was never like a giant fan of them. I bought this dress specifically for this reaction, and I would have to say that my favorite one is the purple one. I don't know his name, but I just like the color purple. I though I have seen some reference photos from these first original three films and they look pretty hilarious but then i saw the photos of the turtles from the michael bay right he directed those the new ones and those look like terrible demon monsters so i don't really know which ones are good which ones aren't good very excited to jump into this first one though today cowabunga The giant clinky weird costumes and like puppetry in this film I thought was gonna throw me for a loop I thought it wasn't going to to work for me but it ended up really working for me the fights in those suits are honestly pretty okay and really decent considering they're in these giant huge buff turtle costumes. The turtles themselves, like the characters of the turtles, there wasn't a lot going on there other than them saying like cool 90s terms and like late 80s radical things, which is pretty good, pretty fun. It's fun in a very campy way. I had a very good time watching it. I think that April O'Neil was stunning. I loved her character in this. She was very much who I imagined April O'Neil would be in a movie about the Ninja Turtles. From what I've heard and from what I hear, Megan Fox was not, the character that was written for her was not in the newer ones. This was like, she was just, she nailed it in this. I loved Casey Jones. I thought he was such a fun character. A really good addition to the Turtles and April. I think that they needed that one other human in there to kind of help with kind of the awkward dialogue that the turtles had. Overall, I loved the characters. Shredder is hilarious. I knew Shredder's name before this, but it's such like a late 80s, early 90s, like skater villain, Shredder. <laughs> Master Splinter was wonderful. His puppet was hilarious. I love rats, so I was super into Splinter. <laughs> You open on April O'Neil telling the news and it's about these crimes that are happening with no suspect. It's called like the silent crimes or whatever. And she's like, the most silent thing though is the silence coming from City Hall. <laughs> oh girl, oh yes, I love it. But then the very next scene is her walking to her car and she sees a rat and she goes ballistic. Like she freaks out. It's like, great, I know that this is most likely foreshadowing for what's coming with Master Splinter but it was a little much. There were times definitely when she was a lot. But I mean, this is a movie about four turtles who trudged themselves into like toxic slime and then became Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, all right, overacting, warranted, I suppose. Then, oh my gosh. Okay, so April's getting herself real deep in with the bad guys because she's reporting on it. And they find her in this emptied out train station. She's waiting for a train, no one else is there. And the bad guy comes up to her and says something that Doug and Rob Walker say a lot to each other. And I've never known what it was from. And I get it now, I get the reference. I am here to deliver a message. <laughs> So she finally meets Splinter and the turtles. It's really cute. They are now staying at her place in the city above her antique shop because she owns like an entire city block, it seems, in New York City. <laughs> and, like, that's like maybe the most unrealistic thing about this entire movie, that. Then you finally get to see the bad guy Lair, which is just like a 90s kid hangout heaven. 
It's really funny, and there's like skateboarding inside, and they're like playing poker, and there's cigarettes. I'm pretty sure that's Sam Rockwell, who's like the lead, one of the lead bad guys for just a scene. Really funny, okay. I see you there, Sam Rockwell getting your start. Then you see Shredder for the first time, and I just wrote, OMG Shredder, love the look. Basically, it's just back and forth between the Foot Gang and the Turtles fighting each other and trying to take back the city of New York. So the Foot Gang comes over to April's apartment where the Turtles are at and sets it all on fire and her place is ruined. I really do enjoy one part in this though. She gets fired while her place is on fire and it's just absolute chaos and then she's also getting fired on the phone. I thought that was, it was a clever way to do it. Splinter had been taken from them, that's why the turtles were staying in her apartment and I just realized that he's still missing by this point and they're really not doing that much to try and find Splinter and he's like this gentle old rat, like go save him. Go save your rat, grandpa, go. It made me a little sad, honestly, that Splinter was like hanging there in the, the dungeon the bad guy's lair. He's just a sweet old grandpa rat ninja. We all know one, we all have one in our lives. Because April's house was set on fire in New York, they go to this giant farmhouse outside probably upstate New York. You own a lot of property, my friend. Good for you. So the turtles are like, oh, I mean, maybe we should find Splinter, and then they meditate him into being, and Splinter's like, I'm so proud of you. Ugh. But I have to say goodbye. <laughs> They're like, oh, I guess we should probably find him now. <laughs> I was so, justice for Splinter. They go back and Danny or Billy or Chad or whoever helps Splinter and the turtles fight Shredder. There are a lot of fights in this film. It's just like scene, scene, fight, scene, scene, fight, scene, scene, fight, scene, scene, fight. And which, what else are you expecting in a Ninja Turtles movie? Nothing, but I was surprised at how well the fights looked and it was like a fun thing to watch the fights when they're in these giant costumes. Animatronic heads, right? Isn't it? There, there's people in the costumes, but the heads are like also at the same time moving. There's like a lot of components to this and the fights honestly didn't look as bad as I thought they were gonna look. They, they were pretty cool. Danny runs up to the dad and is like, Dad, and the dad's like, I've missed you so much. You've been gone. I've had everyone looking for you. Where have you been? And the kid just goes, it's Dan now, Dad. <laughs> it was like this touching moment. <laughs> but that was like such a random thing. And like, I really had to go search my soul. And then I, I met these mutant turtles and I, I, I joined this gang with this like ninja warrior named Shredder and I was like living with him and I was living in the sewers and I really you know what I found out that extra N and the Y not for me dad Casey and April kiss it was cute I'm glad that I don't know I didn't imagine that there was any like April O'Neil and turtle action going on I hoped that there wasn't and there wasn't <laughs> hooray and I just wrote my dream is for a ninja master rat to say cowabunga to me in the credits, there's a rap, and it was amazing. They were once normal, but now they're mutants. Splinter's the teacher, so they are the students. Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Donatello make up the team with one other fellow, Raphael. <laughs> Boy, they sure say damn a lot. They really do. It was honestly darker than I thought it was going to be, and I liked that. Predictions, you won't like it, and I'll never forgive you for it. I did like it. <laughs> Looks like you gotta forgive me. You'll be surprised at how only one of these New York raised turtles has a New York accent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> why? Why? Their, their voices are real weird to me. I know that Corey Feldman, right, is one of them. I guess, overall, if I had to go back and pick my favorite from the film, it would be the orange one, not the purple one. Donatello, right, is the purple one? Michelangelo is the no. Next week, I'm coming back with the sequel to this, number two. Thank you again so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you all next week. Bye. Cowabunga!